a weaker form of the same formulation, the fine eminent for Poisson's equation. So the weak form requires us to do some work in starting from the differential equations. Instead of directly go to discretize the differential equation, we first work on it a little bit. Okay. So the weak form looks at this differential equation. Okay. This differential equation equal to zero, and remember we have this inner product, right? And what we do is that we apply a special type of inner product onto this function. We actually multiply this residual, the differential equation which is equal to zero, by some function g we call a test function, and integrate over the whole domain. So. If the differential equation is satisfied, what should the mean integral be? Zero, right? And zero multiplied by anything integrated should be zero. And then we'll do something to weaken the requirement on the smoothness of the solution. That thing, that procedure is called integration by parts. Okay? So integration by parts, it's simply saying that the integral of a derivative of any product function, let's say, uh, uh, let me see, f times g. So this f and g can be different from the f and g over here, right? This integrated over an entire domain, let's say a to b, the simplest case in 1D, is simply equal to f g at a and b, right? Which means that if I split this term into two, I have g times uh, f times dg dx plus f times uh, plus g times df dx is equal to this. And now, if I apply this formula to here, especially to this term, and uh, uh, consider, I think I didn't, I shouldn't use f, I, let me use h. So h replaces f over here. And uh, here let's substitute h is equal to partial u partial x, which is what we are doing here. Then this term is actually g times dh dx, right? And if this term is g times dh dx, then it can be represented as a boundary term subtract this term. So this is saying that um, first I'll write the g times f term. That is, doesn't change, right? And then g times the second derivative term can be written as a boundary term, which is g times the derivative of u, which is what we define as h at a and b. So let's say omega is equal to a and b and uh, minus another term that is integrated over omega dg dx so that's dg dx times h which is du dx so this is equal to zero okay so what we have done here is that we removed one level of, we can remove one level of differentiability from the solution u because after this integration of parts, the second derivative of u, of u no longer appears, right? But the assumption is that the test function g, which we multiply on top of this differential equation, has to be at least uh, differentiable once. So, so this is a, so going from the differential equation to this form, is a, um, it, it's a it can be only done one way. That is, if u satisfies the differential equation, then u should also satisfy this integral equation for any differentiable g, right? But the other way may not be true. If u satisfies this integral form for any differentiable g, you don't have to satisfy the differential equation. So this is why what we have over here is called a weak form. This is the weak form of the 
uh, PDE or ODE, right? So let's say PDE or ODE. So the weak form can usually be written as something like uh, a function. So so a, which I'm going to discuss later, a a function that is both a function of u and g. Okay, is uh, plus another function that is just a function of g has to be equal to zero for any g belonging to a certain class of linear functions. So this is this is what we call a weak form. And in this case, if you look at the weak form for the Poisson's equation. Oh, by the way, the weak form actually contains the boundary condition. It contains the boundary condition. So for example, if the boundary condition here is that u at a is equal to u at b is equal to zero, okay? If that is the case, uh, let's see what we can... Uh, da, da, da. All right, so, so if this is the case, we actually cannot get rid of anything in this equation. So, so in this case, my, my A is going to be, so, so the first term is include, so any term that includes both U and G belongs to A, so G times F, oh sorry, this actually belongs to L, because uh, the, first, uh, the first term belongs to L because it doesn't involve U, it only involves G. And this term belongs to A, this term belongs to A, right? So, so my function A is uh, equal to uh, minus integral dg dx du dx plus g times du dx, A and B. And my L, which only involves, which does not, is any term that does not involve the unknown solution, U, is equal to this. So why do we do this? This is a weaker form of this differential equation, which requires the solution to be twice differentiable. Now, when we get to the weaker form, it no longer requires my solution to be twice differentiable. It only requires my solution to be differentiable once. So this actually formally allows us to use the set of basis functions. The the, actually, not only the basis function, it allows us to use the linear space we used before, right? Piecewise linear continuous functions. Because if we didn't have that, if we didn't have this linear form, it doesn't make much sense to be looking for solutions in that piecewise linear space because no functions in that space is even twice differentiable. All right. I mean, uh, almost all functions in that space is not twice differentiable. 